Good morning. My name is Councillor Stephen Holliday. I'm the chair of the Etobicoke York Community Council. We have quorum. I am now calling meeting 12 to order. Welcome everyone. Today's meeting is being held by video conference and in person at the Etobicoke Civic Center in the council chamber. The meeting is also being live streamed online at youtube.com slash Toronto City Council Live. Although we may be meeting in different locations today, Community Council would like to acknowledge that the land we are meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto was covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. If you are registered to speak at today's meeting, please listen for me to call your name. I will call the speakers in the order they appear on the list. The list of speakers can be viewed online by visiting the Etobicoke York Community Council page at toronto.ca slash council and clicking the speakers box for today's meeting. Members, the city clerk has provided all agenda materials on toronto.ca slash council and on CMP, the clerk's meeting portal. Clerk's IT staff are available to members if you need help with your devices. I also want to remind you to please submit and approve your motions by email. Staff are available at etcc at toronto.ca to help with motions. Are there any declarations of interest under the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act? If you do have an interest, please indicate the item number and the nature of the interest. Seeing none, we will proceed. May I have a motion to confirm the minutes? from our meeting on February 26, 2024. Deputy Mayor Morley moves. All those in favor, any opposed, and that item is carried. Thank you very much. We can now go through the agenda items. Our first item is EY 12.1 City Initiated Zoning Bylaw Amendments to Implement Eglinton Crosstown West Extension Decision Report Approval. We have one speaker and so that item will be held. EY 12.21911 Finch Avenue West, Jane Finch Mall, Official Plan Amendment and Zoning Amendment Applications, Decision Report, Approval. Councillor Peruzza. Isn't this a public hearing? Yes, I'm getting the yes. And we're past 9.30 so we can make a decision. Do you want to hold the item? There's no one here to, to uh, No registered speakers. Uh, <laughs> Councillor Peruzzo holds EY 12.2, 1911 Finch Avenue West. EY 12.3 is one York Gate Boulevard zoning bylaw amendment and site plan control applications appeal report. Councillor Peruzzo. Um, Can you hit the mic, Phil? Councillor Peruzza moves the staff recommendations. All those in favor? Any opposed? That <coughs> item carries. EY 12.4, 33-51 Walsh Avenue and 2717-2745 Weston Road Zoning Bylaw Amendment and Site Plan Control Applications Appeal Report. Uh, I'd Councilor like to Peruzza. hold this one. Councillor Peruzza is holding EY 12.4, 33-51 Walsh Avenue and 2717 to 2745 Weston Road Zoning Bylaw Amendment. EY 12.5 is 65, 73, 75, 77, 81 McCormick Street, Official Plan Amendment and Zoning Bylaw Amendment Application Appeal Report, Councillor Nunziata. I move the staff recommendation. Councillor Nunziata moves the staff recommendations. All those in favor, any opposed, that carries. EY 12.6 is 6.30, the East Mall Zoning Bylaw Amendment Application Appeal Report. Um, I'll move the staff recommendations. All those in favor, any opposed, that item carries. EY 12.7, 12 Hillside Road, Official Plan Amendment and Zoning Bylaw Amendment Application uh, Decision Report yeah. Refusal. Councillor Peruzzi. Mr. Chair, I don't know if you went through this earlier. I'd like to declare a conflict in this one since I own a home uh, not too far from here. Okay, uh, so we'll um, just take some advice from the clerk on how to process that. Do you, do you want to deal with it now and I can... I can
So the clerk will do a recorded vote on that. Uh, on that. So all the all so the I can I can move the staff recommendations. Yes, Make sir. that easy. <laughs> yes. All those in favor of adopting the recommendations in the staff report: Councillor Morley, Councillor Holiday, Councillor Menziata. That item carries unanimously. Thank you. Uh, EY 12.821 Murray Street, application to remove a private tree. Councillor Morley, there are two speakers, but I'm going to give the floor to Councillor Morley. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, through you, just advising, we have been working uh, with staff and the applicant here. Uh, the intention is to defer this item to a future community council, um, but very happy to hear from uh, any deputants who've come here today to share their, their opinions as well. So if those speakers wish to speak, we can hear from them, but seeing how Councillor Morley intends to defer the item, um, we, can, um, we can just proceed with that. But I'm, if it's okay, we're gonna wait for it to come in order, and uh, if, if, to the clerks, if the, if the speakers connect, if we can let them know the intention to defer, and then we'll, we'll take it from there. Uh, do we have... Layla Agabani, hi Layla, and Kyle Gossin. So I'll just, you don't, you don't have to come up all the way up. Did you want to speak today or do you want to wait till it comes back to the community council? Okay, so we, we can process the item right away, so you can go ahead and move your deferral. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you to uh, the deputants uh, for their indulgence as well. We will certainly look forward to hearing from you when the item comes back before us. And staff should have the language. It's on the screen here. Uh, and I'm moving that consideration of the item be deferred until the May 13th, 2024 meeting of the Planning and Housing Committee. Um, and look, sorry, it should say Etobicoke York Community Council. So we'll make that amendment, apologies, and my thanks to colleagues. That's deferred to May 13th, Etobicoke York Community Council. All those in favor? Any opposed? That is carried. EY 12.9 is 31 clear side place application to remove a private tree. We have speakers registered, so that will be held. EY 12.1058 Talon Road application to remove two private trees. Uh, we have speakers registered, and so that item will be held. Uh, EY 12.11, 301 Rockcliffe Court, 20 Rockcliffe Court, request for a fence exemption to the Toronto Municipal Code, Chapter 447. Yep, so we have a speaker registered for that, so that item will be held. EY 12.1210 San Romano Way application for a clothing drop box location permit. Uh, Councillor Peruzza. Sorry? Uh, so 1212 is 10 San Romano Way. Just hit that microphone. You don't have to do it now. So, so Councillor Peruzza is moving an alternate recommendation that it be denied, we have that ready, great. All those in favor, any opposed, that carries. Is there anybody with a band-aid? EY 12.13-2020 Shepherd Avenue West application for a clothing drop box location permit. Councillor Peruzza. Uh, again, uh, the uh, recommendation to deny. Councillor Peruzza moves the alternate recommendation to deny the permit, all those in favor, any opposed, that carries. EY 12.14, 500 Murray Ross Parkway, okay. application for a clothing drop box location permit. Councillor Peruzza. Uh, 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 move the, uh, the recommendation to deny, Chair. Uh, Councillor Peruzza moves the recommendation to deny. All those in favor? Any opposed? That carries. EY 12.15, Weston Road, application for a clothing drop box location permit. Councillor Nunziata. Yes, um, this, this one, um, they had two boxes and uh, we were told uh, 
by my staff and by city staff that they did remove the one box. So in that case, then I will uh, approve. Councilor Nunziata moves um, alternate number two, which is to approve the application for the proposed clothing drop box location permit at 2190 Weston Road. Madam Clerk, we've got that. Okay, all those in favor? Any opposed? That carries. Uh, EY 12.16 Longbourn Drive, introduction of overnight on-street permit parking, area 11. I'm going to hold that down. Um, Councilor Crisanti is supposed to be joining us electronically any moment. EY 12.7 Burnenthorpe Road, speed limit amendment. Uh, we'll hold that for speakers. Uh, EY 12.18 Jasper Avenue, traffic calming. Councilor Nunziata. Move the staff recommendation. Councilor Nunziata moves the staff recommendations. All those in favor? Any opposed? That item carries. EY 12.19, 23rd Street, one-way street designation. Councilor Morley. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We'll be moving staff recommendations. Councilor Morley moves the staff recommendations. All those in favor? Any opposed? That carries. EY 12.20, Vaudeville Drive, Father Redmond Way, and Tree View Drive, parking amendments and stop control. Councilor Morley. Again, uh, looking to move staff recommendations, Mr. Chair. Councillor Morley moves the staff recommendations. All those in favor? Any opposed? That item carries. EY 12.21, Jurn Street, accessible parking. Councillor Nunziata. Move staff recommendation. Councillor Nunziata moves the staff recommendations. All those in favor? Any opposed? That item carries. EY 12.22, removal of on, of on street accessible loading zone, Woodward Avenue. Councillor Nunziata. Move staff recommendations. Councillor Nunziata moves the staff recommendations. All those in favor? Any opposed? That item carries. EY 12.23, Fairfield Avenue, parking amendments. Councillor Morley. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Staff recommendations on this one. Councillor Morley moves the staff recommendations. All those in favor? Any opposed? That item carries. EY 12.24, turn prohibition, 1738 Islington Avenue, also known as Richview Collegiate. Um, I'll move the staff recommendations. All those in favor? Any opposed? That item carries. EY 1225 is the is 15 Harding Avenue, 150 Emmett Avenue, 170 Emmett Avenue, 1795 Jane Street, designation of fire routes, an amendment to Chapter 880 fire routes. Councillor Nunziata. Move staff recommendations. Councillor Nunziata moves the staff recommendations. All those in favor? Any opposed? That item carries. And Councillor Nunziata, could you move a motion to add new business, which is EY 1226, the reopening of 2023 EY 9.32, parking regulation amendments will be crescent. Like to move that reopening and. Uh, Councilor Nunziata moves reopening. All those in favor? And that is now on the agenda. Very good. Okay. So we'll go back up to the top. And we will go to EY 12.1, which is the city initiated zoning bylaw amendments to implement Eglinton Crosstown West Extension decision report approval. Our first speaker is. Neeland Bressenden. Is Neeland available? Good morning, Neeland. There, can you, good morning. Can you hear me okay? We can. We're just going to adjust the volume level. Can you give me a quick one, two, three? One, two, three. Okay. One, two, three. Very good. Uh, welcome to the Etobicoke York Community Council. Uh, you have five minutes. Please begin as soon as you're ready. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Chair, Vice Chair and councillors for giving me the opportunity to speak on this matter today at Etobicoke York Community Council. My name is Neeland Brissenden and I am a Mount Dennis resident and spokesperson for the Save Eglinton Flats Coalition, which includes the Mount Dennis Community Association, Mount Dennis Eco Neighbourhood Initiative, Stop the Trains in Our Parks, Sierra Club of Canada and the Greenbelt Guardians, as well as local urban Indigenous leaders. Our coalition is dedicated to the preservation and protection of Mount Dennis's green space, which includes Pyram Park, Bertie Brown Park, the Eglinton Flats, and the Humber River Valley. To be clear, we are absolutely in favor of the Eglinton Crosstown West Extension. We believe the community of Mount Dennis deserves world-class transit and the protection of our green space. These interests should not be mutually exclusive. The affected parks and 1,500 trees are a flood and an erosion protector, sound barrier, cool the parks in hot weather, 
a wildlife corridor to the Humber River system and home to threatened and endangered species. These parks are used for ceremony by our local urban indigenous community, education, recreation, and contribute to the mental health well-being of the residents within our community and across the city. The footprint of this park system approaches that of High Park and is just as important for our city. With over 5,000 new residential units planned to be built in our community over the next 10 years, we'll need our parks more than ever. The Eglinton West Planning and uh, the Eglinton West Planning and Streetscape Study final report from April of 2021 cites a potential for additional neighborhood linkages to natural areas so as to protect green spaces and provide a relationship between these open spaces to residential uses. Building a massive elevated concrete structure right through the middle of the spaces is the antithesis of this, and we would argue bad transit planning. The citizens of Etobicoke were consulted on the alignment of the project, which led to the entirety of the ECWE being built underground except for the one and a half kilometer stretch through Mount Dennis Parks. The Mount Dennis community originally promised a similar consultation was never given the same opportunity. We are advocating for true consultation with Metrolinx and an opportunity to influence the alignment of the ECWE, not just window dressing community meetings and box checking exercises. I would like to thank Councillor Nunziata for her leadership on this issue. In May of 2022, Councillor Nunziata moved member motion 43.34 that directed City Council through the Executive Director of Transit Expansion request Metrolinx undertake an assessment of running the elevated segment of the Eglinton Crosstown West Extension underground and to identify any options that may exist to accommodate this change. This motion was unanimously approved by City Council. This was also followed up by a Mayor Tory motion, item 2022 uh, EX 33.1, which was also unanimously approved by City Council. While submitting the motion, Mayor Tory blasted Metrolink, saying that Metrolink is certainly not up to and accustomed to the standards we set for public consultation in anything we do, whether it's transit or not. Councillor Nunziata also recently filed motion 2023 MM 13.3, which directs the general manager transportation services and the executive director transit expansion to investigate opportunities to reduce the setbacks between Eglinton Avenue West and the Eglinton Crosstown West Elevated Guideway. As far as we can tell, Metrolinx has ignored all of these motions. As far as we can tell, only the city seems to be taking its constituents' concerns seriously. We are asking the city to push back and not rubber stamp any approvals for Metrolinx or the province until they start working with the city and its residents in a truly constructive and collaborative manner. We would like a full review of the act grade alternative for the Eglinton Crosstown West. The Minister of Transportation has chosen to ignore our concerns and the city's unanimously approved motions and describe our community with the pejorative, reductive, and categorically untrue NIMBY label. Metrolinx and the Ministry of Transportation will say they don't have time for these community led changes. This is all while the Crosstown is delayed and Mount Dennis Station remains closed. Tell Metrolinx to finish what it started with the Crosstown and do what's right with the extension. There is still time. I would like to conclude my remarks by reaffirming that the community of Mount Dennis is saying yes to transit, yes to intensification, and yes to development. But that's not to say that we are supportive of a blank check without any true consultation that destroys our green space. Thank you again for your time and consideration. Thank you, Mr. Brissenden. Are there any questions of the speaker? Seeing none, thank you for joining us. I'll just check, is there anyone else uh, wishing to speak on this item? Seeing none, uh, questions of staff. Seeing none, members wishing to speak? All right, I'll move the report then. All those in favor, any opposed, that item is carried. All right, on to the next item. EY 12.2, which is 1911-1911 Finch Avenue West, the Jane Finch Mall. Official Plan Amendment and Zoning Amendment Applications Decision Report for approval. Are there any members of the public wishing to speak in the room today or anyone online? Seeing none, questions of staff? Seeing none, members wishing to speak? 
Uh, Mr. Chair, I just want to consult with staff for a few minutes. Can we just uh, set this aside for, for um, uh, 10 minutes or so, and, uh, uh, and then we'll deal with it then? Okay. Consent of the members, is that okay? All right. So we'll just stand that item down. So we're going to just set down item um, 12.4, which is 33 to 51 Walsh Avenue and 2717 to 2745 Weston Road uh, because Councillor Peruzza just needs a moment to get this sorted out. Um, so our next item is going to be 12, EY 12.9, which is 31 Clearside Place, application to remove a private tree. We have a speaker registered. That is Christopher Smith. Is Christopher with us in the room? Great. Welcome, Christopher. Come on up. Just give me one second. Uh, well, come on up, but but I just I want to ask if someone could just ask them to just slip down the hall a little bit because it's a bit noisy. They don't know. Thanks, Sean. Uh, welcome to the Etobicoke York Community Council, Christopher. Uh, you've got five minutes to speak to us. Please go ahead as soon as you're ready. Okay, thank you very, can you hear me okay? thank you very much for hearing me out on this uh, item. Thank you to the council for allowing me to speak. Uh, my wife and I are the homeowners of uh, 31 Clearside Place. We're new to the beautiful neighborhood, but we've been Etobicoke natives for over 10 years. Um, during that time... Okay, that's much better. <laughs> That's good. I get the nerves out. I thought it was on. <laughs> okay, sorry. Thank you very much for the council for allowing me to speak on this matter. My wife and I are the homeowners of 31 Clearside Place. Um, we're new to this new. Uh, we're new to this beautiful neighborhood, but uh, we've been Etobicoke natives for over 10 years. Um, during that time, we haven't had to ask the city council for anything, and so we do not take this matter lightly. So thank you. Um, I understand. Urban Forestry, Parks and Recreation has advised to deny our request. Uh, the reason cited was fear of property damage should the tree fail. Uh, our, our request is actually based more on a fear of damage and potential damage that can't be seen. Um, I have a written letter from my neighbor at 33 Clearside um, that describes the damage to his foundation, water damage interior, and, um, excuse me, uh, roots in his basement drains. Um, I just wanted to come here to kind of say that I'm not some chainsaw wielding nut job who is anti-environment, anti-ravine. We love our backyard. We love this neighborhood. Um, we're more than happy to do whatever it takes to make up for the loss of this tree. Um, we're fine with doing arborist maintenance to make sure that roofing and the roof and drains and eavesdrops are taken care of. It's more, to me, it's, I'm of the opinion of, it's a more a question of when, not if, just due to the size of this tree and the damage that will be done eventually to our home. Um, that's it, really. I don't want to take up too much time. Thank you very much for hearing me out. And again, we, we don't take this matter lightly. So thank you. Thank you. Um, if you can just stay there. Um, questions of the speaker? I'm going to have a couple. So I'll uh, pass the chair to Counsel Councillor Holliday to ask questions. Um, thanks for coming, Christopher. The I don't know if you know, and you can confirm, because I can only ask you questions uh, through this process. Um, um, are you aware that members of council don't get a lot of time with these reports? So when it gets posted in public is the first time we see it. I'm hearing that for the first time. Right. Okay. And uh, you, you, I just want to make sure I understood correctly. You have a letter from your From my neighbor? Because the tree is like directly on our property line. Exactly. In between the two homes. Okay. So I do have that here with me. Okay. Um, do you think uh, by next council meeting you might be able to make some arrangements to get your neighbor to file that in public? or send the letter to community council to say, hey, this is what I think. Yeah, I, uh, I'm sure that, I could do that. Would you appreciate that might leave members of council wondering, right? You know, there's this tree in the middle. We haven't heard from the neighbor. We don't know what to do. Totally fair enough. Okay. And uh, if, uh, if I was to move a motion to push this to the next community council meeting, uh, would you be interested in giving me a call and we can have a further conversation? 
I very much look forward to that and appreciate it. Yeah. Fantastic. Yes. Thanks very much for joining us. I Thank you, sir. It. All right. Questions of staff? Oh, I should actually I should say any other speakers on this item? Nope. Okay. Questions of staff? Um, no, I do not. Nope. Uh, members wishing to speak? There's one. <laughs> so I'll speak very briefly. Uh, Madam Clerk, could you put the motion to uh, defer the item to next day? So uh, if we can make it a simple motion just to defer to next day, no conditions, no direction to staff. Uh, no, nine. Yep, 31 clear side place. So yeah, this is just a simple deferral to the next meeting. So uh, I'll speak very briefly. I, I thank I thank the uh, the resident for coming. Um, it's always hard for members of the council to <coughs> figure this out with the one report. And there's a hole in in the information for us on this one. We didn't know what the neighbor at 33 thought of it because clearly the tree's in the middle. So um, I'm really hoping that the resident will give my office a call and uh, maybe I'll either come out or we'll have a deep conversation on the phone about the circumstances and uh, I'll be in a better position to come back and make a recommendation to uh, you, my colleagues, at the next council meeting. And I, I really thank you for coming today. It's, uh, it's very helpful. So uh, anyone else with questions or want, wishing to speak? Nope. All right. Motion to defer to next day. All those in favor? Any opposed? That item carries. Uh, next item is EY 12.10, which is 58 Talon Road. And that is an application to remove a private two private trees. Uh, we have a speaker, Andrew Volkening. Is Andrew here in the chamber or online? Nothing. Okay. I'm online. I was unable to unmute. Okay. Uh, good morning, Andrew. Welcome to the Etobicoke York Community Council. Uh, we don't have a visual, but we, oh, there we go. But we can definitely hear you. Um, you've got five minutes to talk to the council. Please begin as soon as you're ready. Thank you. Uh, thank you, councillors, for uh, taking the time to uh, hear me today. Um, I don't know how much time you've had to review the report um, that was put together, but my main concern is we have two large um, Don Redwood trees that have grown significantly since we've purchased the house. And they were planted in um, the back corners of the backyard. They've grown enough that it has become um, almost impossible to maintain fencing around the backyard. When we purchased the house, uh, it came with a pool in the backyard. And my biggest concern with this is just safety. Uh, we've done work over the years to try to create boxes around the trees to extend the space that it had going on to even the neighbor's property on one, uh, on one neighbor. But the tree continues to grow and continues to destroy any fencing that we put up at uh, great expense. And so this affects several of our neighbors. Um, and some of the neighbors are unpleased about this as well, but it's really about trying to maintain, um, maintain fencing around the backyard in order to secure it for safety reasons because of, the, because of the pool in the backyard and maintain our obligations of, of having the fence as per other city bylaws. We've had arborists out um, who tell us that the trees will continue to grow. Um, we've had fencing specialists out who um, can give me temporary um, solutions at the cost of thousands of dollars, but again, they're only temporary, which force us to kind of go more on, put fencing either more on the neighbor's lawn or destroy tree roots in order to kind of be more on our property. And nothing's really ideal and every solution we've had is temporary. When we contacted the city, had the department out, uh, the recommendation from the city at that time was to just let the tree grow through the fence 
but uh, my opinion is that's not on that's not safe you're going to have gaps there and it's not um not I ideal to kind of have those gaps in the fence and i'm not sure that that actually leaves us in compliance with the city's fencing laws i do have additional pictures um if that'll help the council uh but that's uh what i wanted to say today uh thank you andrew if you could uh not go away um i'll ask if any of my colleagues have questions of you no and i'm going to ask you a couple of questions so i'll pass the chair to the vice chair Thank you, Vice Chair. Um, Andrew, could you just articulate a little bit deeper why you're here today? I mean, we obviously know that you um, have appealed the permits to remove the tree, but what's what's driven you to, to bring this up now? It, it's really, um, we're at a loss in, in order to, how to both let the tree continue to grow and to maintain fencing around the backyard. Uh, we're kind of at a crossroads where um, it's one or the other, and uh, we, uh, we we need to be able to come to a resolution. Um, the other piece is that I feel that because of my concerns of um, my obligations of needing to keep uh, the fencing up around the backyard in order to maintain compliance with um, having the pool in the backyard that I need some resolution um, there with with what to do with these trees because I, I just can't um, they're the, where they're positioned in the backyard and the size that they're growing to has has made it almost impossible to to move forward um, what's your plans with the fence the if I were able to remove the trees um, I would uh, basically rebuild the, the fence uh, into the surrounding area around the backyard. Um, right now, the fence, uh, the fencing around the trees is disconnected from the main posts, even where we've kind of extended and, and boxed it out. Um, it's grown past that boxed out area as well. So if I was able to remove the trees, um, I would uh repair the fence if i am not able to remove the trees i don't have a good plan um for how to maintain the fencing okay did you catch the previous speaker and uh their their request and how i handled that i don't know if you did uh i believe you asked him to uh get his neighbor to contact you and yeah. uh as well and then yeah okay so if um if i was to defer this an extra month um, would you be comfortable to reach out to me and maybe we can have a look together and get a plan put around this? Yes, I would, I'd appreciate that very much. Okay. Uh, thanks very much for speaking to us. Uh, any further questions? Seeing none. Um, any further speakers to the item? Seeing none. Great. Uh, questions to staff? Seeing none to speak. I'll speak really briefly. It's just simply a motion to defer to next day. I need a little bit more time on this uh, to come back to the community council with a plan. All those in favor of the deferral to next day? Any opposed? That carries. Okay. Um, EY 12.11, 301 Rockcliffe Court, request for a fence exemption to the Toronto Municipal Code, Chapter 447. We have a speaker registered, that is Marco Maturi. Is Marco in the chamber or online? Great. Online. Hi, Marco. Can you just give us a one, two, three, because you're really quiet here. Oh, one, two, three. Sounds much better. Okay, welcome to the Etobicoke York Community Council. You've got five minutes. Please begin as soon as you're ready. I'm actually here just to request a deferral uh, on this one. The owner's not available, and uh, we're working with city staff to address it, so I was hoping we could defer to the next meeting. Okay. Thanks, Marco. Any questions of the speaker? Seeing none, thank you for joining us. Any other speakers on this item? Seeing none, questions of staff? No, I just move the deferral. Okay. Councillor Nunziata is moving a deferral. All those in favor? Any opposed? That carries.
Okay, uh, back to the items that we skipped. We do. Thank you. You know what? Yeah, we have one more item with deputations. I think just respectful of the people in the room, we'll go to that, and then we'll go back to the beginning of the list. I think there's three items. Uh, none of those have speakers. So EY 12.17, which is Burnhamthorpe Road, speed limit amendment. We have three speakers. The first is Adam Rogers. Adam, I think you're online. Can you hear me? It's Stephen Holliday. Good morning. Hello, can you hear me? Good morning, Adam. Can you give us a one, two, three? Because it sounds a bit quiet. Uh, one, two, three. That's better. Okay, welcome to the Etobicoke York Community Council. Uh, you have five minutes to speak. Please begin as soon as you're ready. No problem. I'll keep this uh, as short as I can uh, because I know we have to probably all get back home uh, because of the solar eclipse. Don't want to be on the roads at that time. So, uh, so I am writing to voice my. Uh, sorry, I'm writing. I'm reading my own letter. Sorry. I, I'm speaking today to uh, voice my disagreement with staff's rejection of a uh, speed limit reduction from 50 to 40 kilometers on Burnham Thorpe between Kipling and Dundas. So I grew up uh, in this area. I know this stretch well. Um, honestly, I was kind of surprised uh, by the staff's reports uh, and a lack of uh, emphasis on the very dangerous curve on Burnham Thorpe between Holloway and Burnham Thorpe Crescent. I know from growing up in this area and driving, biking, walking, living in this area, I know that there have definitely, I can tell you, have been accidents on this curb. And it should even be noted, as noted in the report itself, there's actually a warning sign on that stretch of winding road with a 30 kilometer per hour advisory sign. So we're already talking about a stretch which takes up the, almost the majority of this particular area that uh, that is being talked about is already on a reduced speed warning for because of this uh, dangerous stretch. I should also note that there are going to be two major developments that are coming in between uh, Burnham Thorpe Crescent and Dundas West. We're talking about a major um, condo develop seniors condo development at Dundas and Burnham Thorpe, and another one that is coming uh, a, mul a multiple townhouse location at Burnham Thorpe Crescent. This means that very likely the road is already going to have to have speed reductions and going to have some sort of uh, massing on Burnham Thorpe for multiple years. So honestly, I'm also surprised this wasn't mentioned in the report at all because the reality of the street is gonna change very shortly. It also should be mentioned that there's gonna be a major streets development that likely will pass based on general trends, which means we're going to see more development on Burnham Thorpe. We're going to see more fourplexes, more, more condos, more townhouses. This is gonna be the reality of this street. We should move now rather than later because we're gonna revisit it. But in the meantime, how many accidents can we prevent? Um, I should also mention, um, as, as there was a le another letter that I saw uh, brought in from the uh, Safer Streets Coalition, um, and very unfortunately, as I'm sure everyone is aware, there was a 12-year-old girl who was struck. Uh, uh, thankfully, uh, uh, thankfully, she was okay, but that was at Burnham Thorpe and Kipling. So we're talking about right at the very edge of this spot. It was shocking. I'm sure we all were shocked when we saw this. And there are many school children in this area. There is a daycare in the uh, the church uh, lot. This area um, has needed this change for a long time. Uh, and I, I, I commend staff. They do a wonderful work. I happen to disagree with them. I think many people in the neighborhood also disagree. I think it's about time and it should be noted I understand there's a TTC bus that goes through the 50 Burnham Thorpe. Well, the 50 Burnham Thorpe hits a 40 speed limit right by the right on Cordova when it crosses over to the school zone. This is not this bus is already well versed with having this speed reduction. So anyway, I just wanted to voice my uh, my uh, for the for the council to uh, reject this rejection and said go with this 40 speed limit. We should act now rather than later. Uh, it's going to happen anyway based on the rate of development, based on what's happening. Why wait two years? Why wait, uh, risk other accidents? Um, as that letter I mentioned has mentioned the amount of accidents in this area, this is a well-known dangerous stretch. Winding road, 40 makes sense. Uh, I'll leave it at that uh, unless there's a question. 
Thanks, Adam. Are there any questions of the speaker? Seeing none. Our next speaker is, uh, thank you for joining us, Adam. Our next speaker is Carolyn McGee. Hi, Carolyn. Hi. Welcome to the Etobicoke York Community Council. You've got five minutes. Thank you very much. I actually didn't, didn't time this, so I'll speak fast. <clears throat> thank you for uh, making time to address this critical matter of safety in our community. I, I did make a written submission, but I would like to speak to some salient points that it seems transportation, transportation services has missed. Number one, the unique characteristics of this stretch of road. Burnthorpe, northwest of Dundas, is serpentine in shape, comprised of severe S-bends, described by some as perilous twists. There is no space between the road and the sidewalk, and therefore there is no transition or margin of error between cars and pedestrians. An elementary school is located right at the gateway or the endpoint, depending on the direction you're going, of those S-bends. Number two, the stunning record of potentially catastrophic accidents. The accident tally seems to include not just, or needs to include rather, not just vehicle collisions, but also all the accidents of vehicles out of control, traversing the sidewalk, and crashing into both public and private property. I do have some photographs that some of the residents took. May I distribute them? Thank sure, you. The, the clerk can help with that. Thank Thanks. you. Um, so as you look at the pictures, I'll describe a little bit of, of a short list of, of accidents that have taken place. Lamp post knocked over at 2 Wembley Avenue. Hydro pole knocked over three times at 89 Burnhamthorpe Road. Guardrail hit at Burnhamthorpe Crescent. Lamp post hit three times, knocked over two times at 123 Burnhamthorpe Road. Car crashed into garage at 60 Burnhamthorpe Road. Car crashed into car parked in driveway at 34 Burnham Thorpe Road. Car crashed through garden at 96 Burnham Thorpe Road and knocked over retaining wall at 92 Burnham Thorpe Road. Looks like I've got time to keep going. Um, <laughs> uh, car crashed into the porch at 187 Burnham Thorpe Road. Car knocked down the traffic light on the east side of Kipling. Car knocked over the no tracks and the one way signs in the medium at Burnham Thorpe Park Boulevard. Car crashed into a tree and bus stop standard in the median at Burnhamthorpe Park Boulevard. Car hit a cyclist in front of 119 Burnhamthorpe Road. Car crashed through the bushes and into the front porch entry at 2 Wembley Avenue. And in the Toronto Police Service's killed or severely injured database was the reference uh, that Adam made to the 12-year-old pedestrian who suffered serious injuries when she was struck by a car at Burnhamthorpe and Kipling. Uh, number three, the future burgeoning population in this major transit station area. There are currently more than 1,600 new residential units under construction or in the development queue just at the intersection of Burnhamthorpe Road and Dundas. This promises many more pedestrians, many more bikes, many more cars on Burnhamthorpe Road. So just by the sheer numbers, the odds of serious injury or death will be magnified. Uh, I have noticed the recent precedents of City Council voting to reduce speed limits on uh, many other major arterial roads. On November 9, 2021, City Council authorized the redu reduction of the speed limit on Parkside Drive from 50 to 40. Uh, and here is part of the remorseful preamble for that decision, and I quote, the deaths of Valdemar and Fatima Avila should have been prevented. For years, local residents have been advocating for improved safety measures. Toronto's rules for following or for managing streets are antiquated and do not put safety ahead of traffic flow, unquote. Uh, just last June, last year, on June 14th, 2023, City Council authorized the speed limit reduction from 50 to 40 on the major arterial roads in wards 4, 9, 11, 12, 13, and 14, with a few exceptions. And the majority of Etobicoke York community councillors who are here today voted in favor of the lowered speed limit on those roads. So in conclusion, I implore you to prioritize the safety of our neighborhood. Please make a motion and vote to reduce the speed limit to 40 kilometers an hour on Broomthorpe between Kipling and Dundas. Lives will be saved. Thank you. Are there any questions of the speaker? Seeing none, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Our next speaker is... Scott Priest, Scott here today, Scott online. Okay. Good morning, Scott. It's uh, Stephen Holiday from the Utopic York Community Council. Can you hear me? Uh, 
Uh, can you hear me? Yes, very well. Welcome to the Etobicoke York Community Council. You've got five minutes to address the council. Please begin as soon as you're ready. Thank you. Good morning, uh, Mr. Chair and members of Community Council. Uh, I thank you for letting me, giving me the opportunity to speak this morning. Uh, for the record, my name is Scott Priest, and I reside at 123 Burnham Thorpe Road, which is midway uh, up the the road subject road section that's uh, in um, under under um, consideration today. Uh, I'm speaking today as a concerned res resident on the subject road section, and as one who has been impacted on numerous occasions. I think uh, Carolyn just mentioned them. Uh, uh, by speeding, which is a regular occurrence on this road. I've had the lamppost knocked over uh, hit three times and knocked over twice, and I've had a wheel go through my front window. Uh, in that case, uh, it was a car that had a single car collision. That A car hit a tree next on my next-door neighbor's property. Uh, the passenger was killed, and the wheel went through my front window. Uh, again, uh, just down the road and Carolyn mentioned this and I think Adam also mentioned it. Uh, the parquet, we've had numerous trees knocked over. We've had the bus stop knocked over in that uh, parquet on numerous occasions. Uh, I think in the pictures that were distributed by Carolyn, uh, there's a picture of a cone and that cone is where the bus stop would have been. Uh, my neighbor down the street uh, below the, the parquet uh, at 89, has had his lamppost knocked over three times. The neighbor across the street has, has had a car land in her garden. This is all at the, when you exit the, um, the natural chicane on, on uh, Burnham Thorpe Road, uh, at the intersection of Burnham Thorpe Road and Burnham Thorpe Park Boulevard and Holloway. Uh, and this is very dangerous, uh, as mentioned by uh, the two previous speakers. Uh, you cannot tell me that this cluster of accidents, which staff has said is, is similar to other roadways, uh, is, is, is similar. Uh, we have a very, uh, you know, winding road, which goes into a straightaway and people use this as a raceway. Uh, and these are in addition, these accidents I've just mentioned, in addition to, to a number of accidents further up the roadway, uh, up to the intersection of Kipling and and then uh, or Kipling and, and Burnham Park Road, and as mentioned by the two previous speakers, a 12-year-old girl was severely severely injured at that intersection. Uh, you have my letter, which goes into detail as to why I believe Transportation Services re uh, report for action is flawed. Uh, Carolyn has touched on it, as has Adam. Uh, I won't repeat because Carolyn's gone into detail. That list of accidents was a list that I prepared over the 11 years that I've been uh, requesting that the city deal with the, this dangerous situation. Uh, and you have letters from upwards of 30 of my neighbors. You have a letter from Safe Streets, which has been mentioned. And there was a Burnham Park Road neighborhood meeting held by Councillor Morley last February, or a year ago, February. Uh, which more than 100 residents turned out expressing their concerns with traffic in our neighborhood. Residents in our neighborhood want action. Uh, if the members of community council truly believe in the city's Vision Zero safety plan and making our streets safe for pedestrians, cyclists and drivers, you should recommend the approval of the reduction of speed from 50 kilometers per hour to 40 kilometers per hour. Uh, Carolyn touched on, on this being done in wards 4, 9, 11, 12, 13, and 14, where any road over 40 kilometers was reduced to 40 kilometers with some limited exceptions. Uh, please do not wait until a senseless death occurs, which could have been prevented by your actions. Uh, I thank you for your time and your consideration. Thank you. Uh, any questions of the speaker? Seeing none. Uh, questions of staff. Councillor Nunziata. Who am I asking? Oh, Sean. Sean. Sorry, you know what, I, Sean, question, bef I before we start, I'm just going to check just to make sure. My apologies. Are there any other speakers on this item that I might have missed? <laughs> ah, okay, one more. Apologies, Councillor. No problem. Okay, Sean, so. Just, no, just hang on. We just, we had one more speaker that was oh, on the list. Okay. 
Good morning. Could 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 I just ask you to give your name and then we can get you registered with the team? Yes. Uh, okay, I'm on. Good. Uh, my name is Mr. Roel Jones. I'm at 147 Burnham Thorpe Road. That's across uh, right at the uh, Royal Avon and Burnham Thorpe. And uh, I don't want to go through all the incidents occurred on the Burnham Thorpe Road, as you've heard before. The only thing that I'd like to mention is the pedestrians, uh, the danger of walking side by side with the, with the road. Uh, when the cars are speeding at 65, 70 kilometers an hour. So what happens is, in the event of a bus or a truck driving by, there's a vacuum that's created by the force of the uh, speed, and the pedestrian on the sidewalk uh, feels it drastically, and you've got to kind of fight against that vacuum so as not to be swept under the bus or the truck. A speed of 40 would definitely uh, help that situation. In the event of the uh, Mississauga bus, for example, mm -hmm. they drive fast because they don't have stops, frequent stops on Burnham Thorpe, so they just whiz by. Uh, the uh, TTC bus, on the other hand, because of the frequency of their stops, they slow down, they go at 45, 50, and it makes a, a drastic a difference for a pedestrian. Uh, the bikers uh, on Burnham Thorpe, they use the sidewalks simply because it's not safe for them. What happens to the pedestrians is if the biker is uh, approaching you from the front, you can kind of go to the side. But on many occasions, you have uh, bikers behind you where you obviously you cannot see them, and they speed by you. Uh, and a uh, number of occasions in my own personal experience, uh, they just whiz by you, I don't know, 25, 30 K an hour, and that's quite frightening uh, for a pedestrian on a sidewalk. The problem with the sidewalk at uh, Burnaptor from Kipling to Dundas is there is no buffer zone between the road and the sidewalk. If you go on the uh, Burnaptor Road, West of Kipling, there's a six foot uh, buffer zone with a lawn, a grass, basically. So that vacuum isn't felt there because I walk there as well. Uh, but because of the uh, situation, the, the sidewalks are very narrow. They're four feet, four and a half feet uh, wide, and it's right beside the road. And that's my concern of that, besides obviously the speed of 75K an hour. Uh, I've measured that a couple of years back and I've sent a letter to uh, my counselor. I've sent an email uh, last Friday to all of you uh, so you have all that information there. I just wanted to mention that and obviously I second what Ms. McGee had said in regard to all the incidents that have occurred on uh, Burnham Tower Road. So I don't know if there's any questions but it seems uh, common sense to reduce the speed to 40 in that particular section. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Any questions of the speaker? Seeing none, thank you very much for joining us. Um, sorry, Councillor Nunziata, we'll go back to questions of staff. So, Sean. Yes, Councillor. In your report, in light of, and we also received the pictures from the deputy, um, there has been uh, 24 reported collisions. Um, so why would you recommend uh, not to reduce the speed limit when you have that many collisions in an area? I mean, that's quite high. I won't comment on whether it's high or not, um, but uh, when we evaluated the speed limit uh, on Burnham Thorpe, uh, we compared it against our warrants um, and found that the existing 50 kilometer speed limit uh, was the appropriate speed limit for that roadway, um, given its uses and uh, location and the traffic that it carries. Um, one of the key problems on arterial roads with creating artificially low speed limits is poor compliance um, that then creates uh, significant speed differentials, right? So you've got you know, some vehicles that are going to abide by the speed limit and drive 40, 
others that are not and are going to be driving 65, and that speed differential can cause significant conflicts, more conflicts be between drivers. So. Okay, thank you. Other questions of staff? I'm going to ask a couple if I can pass the chair, Vice Chair. Please. Thank you, Vice Chair. Um, could you elaborate a little bit more on the concept of speed differential? I know we've, we've heard about this at Council, but I don't know if we've talked about it here. Sure. Speed differential basically refers to that, that difference in speeds between uh, adjacent motor vehicles. Um, high speed differentials uh, increase the number of conflicts that typically occur between those vehicles, which could result in loss of control and, and leaving the roadway. Um, we've, we've taken, uh, I would say, pretty significant measures to improve safety through this corridor. Um, we've installed a new traffic signal, extensive amounts of guide rail. Um, it's been converted to a community safety zone. Uh, we've got watcher speed, driver feedback signs. Uh, it was approved for automated speed enforcement and, and was deployed there. Um, we've most recently enhanced the pavement markings, especially through the curved section, to discourage uh, vehicles changing lanes um, and to highlight the curb face. Um, extensive okay. signing. People have already talked about the, the curb warning signs that we have in place. Um, so we, we've taken the measures that we think will enhance the safety, um, but don't think the speed limit changes one of those. How long is the road segment? Uh, 950 meters, I think. Okay. And um, is there anything, so there's two parts to this, if I recall. One is a sort of curves, and then there's a straight section. Is it fair to say it's about half and half? Uh, I think more like two thirds, one third, okay. but. All right. And is there anything that makes the straight portion of it different from the rest of Burnham Thorpe? Um, nothing coming to mind. Uh, other than, I guess, the close proximity of the sidewalk. Okay. And how, and how about Kipling Avenue? Anything make it different from Kipling? Kipling's 50. Um, not really, no. We think it's uh, pretty consistent. How, how many cars a day? Uh, I'd have to go back and look, but uh, my recollection is that, that Kipling actually carries more vehicles. Um, Would it fall into the category of major arterial? Yes, absolutely. Okay. But thank you. I, I have no further questions. Thanks. Any other questions? Nope. Yeah, back to you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. All right, members wishing to speak. Deputy Mayor Morley, please go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you, I do have a motion on this item. Uh, and I do want to start off by thanking staff for their work on this over many, 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 many years. As you heard from local residents, they've been advocating regularly as a result of the ongoing issues with collisions um, that are impacting the neighborhood. There are some unique conditions here, including the proximity to the sidewalk and roadway, as well as um, the curvy nature of the street. Despite a lot of the efforts that we've worked closely with staff to implement, the concerns are very much alive for neighborhood residents, as we've heard here today. Um, we've gotten correspondence from over 30 immediately impacted residents along the stretch of road um, whose yards or whose you know front doors face uh, Burnham Thorpe Road. And we've also, as was mentioned earlier, hosted a town hall specifically on this issue um, to continue to, uh, to review what's possible here. So the motion before you, um, apologies, uh, I'm going to read it out here if clerks can, can pull it back up. That's okay. I should have read it first. That's totally my bad. Thank you. Oh, did I? So the motion is, yeah, to authorize reducing the speed limit from 50 kilometers an hour to 40 kilometers an hour uh, from Burnham Thorpe Road to Kipling Avenue and Dundas Street West. Uh, this community is going to be growing exponentially. There are seniors housing coming to the neighborhood. And on the other side of the road, there is a school zone that has the 40 kilometer an hour um, speed limit. And so we do think this is appropriate and consistent and is certainly a response to the ongoing engagement and advocacy of local residents. Uh, and I look to my colleagues for support. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, anyone else wishing to speak on this item? 
Yes. Councillor Nunziata? Yeah, just briefly, I, I will be supporting the motion by the councillor. Um, you know, uh, when I drive by there, it's there, cars are speeding. And, you know, to reduce it from 50 to 40, if the residents in the area feel safer to reduce the speed limit, you know, I mean, I, I don't understand why we're refusing the request. Um, and I'm not criticizing staff, but I mean, this is where we go vision zero. I mean, you know, people are going through red lights, speeding everywhere. It's just so dangerous. And, uh, you know, we do, as was mentioned, there was a community meeting where a number of residents uh, attended. So I will be supporting reducing the speed limit from uh, 50 to 40, um, especially in light of the number of collisions in your report. I've never, I, I've never seen that many collisions uh, within that stretch of road um, in any request that's been made. So I will be supporting the um, motion. Thank you. Uh, anyone else wishing to speak? Councillor, I, I'm going to speak too, so I'll pass the chair to you. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. You want me to? Okay. I'll pass the chair. All right. <laughs> um, thank you. I'm, I'm not going to support the amendment. Um, I do commend um, Deputy Mayor Morley for doing a lot of work with the community. Um, I've been here for about nine years, and I don't think that this, this issue is new. Uh, it's come up many, many times in the past. I wish there was an easy answer. Uh, on, on many of these things. Uh, but, you know, Councillor Morley is doing something uh, to work with the community. I guess I have the philosophical question of, you know, are we making things better or worse? And I have advice from before me from the Transportation Services Department. I'm thoroughly convinced that they do really try to make things better. Um, but they do raise the, the issue of speed differential, and I know we've talked about that at Council. And it comes down to compliance. And you ask yourself the simple question, right? If people aren't following the 50 sign, you know, are they actually going to follow the 41? And what does that do with how people react to and treat our roads? Does it enhance their confidence in how things are organized? And does it enhance their compliance? Um, or do they just start to ignore these signs? And do we get worse off? It's the same as a stop sign, right? We get Sometimes we get requests that says, you know, this intersection, we, we have to add a four-way stop. And you look at it, you find out 90% of the cars, you know, go through on one side and 10% on the other. And then you add the stop sign and you say, well, does that make it better or worse? Because now people are going to roll through that because they know, you know, a stop sign doesn't really belong there. So um, I tend to follow the Transportation Services Department. I think they, they bring us good advice. Um, I would really like things to be better, but... You know, sometimes you have to dig a little deeper in and be really, really clear on the problem we're trying to solve. And I get it. There's crashes. There's people that don't feel safe. But I'd like to know a little bit more about what caused those crashes. Does speed have anything to do with it? We don't, we don't have that evidence in front of us. And maybe if transportation services had evidence that that was going to change or be better, they, they would bring us a recommendation otherwise. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, uh, sometimes it's hard to vote no against what people have been asking for, but you have to do what you think in your heart of hearts is right. And I do weigh heavily on this concept of, of speed differential. And if we end up with cars doing 60 and cars doing 40 in the same S-Bend, does that make it better? And by the way, I don't know that many go 60 through the S-Bend because you have to really try to go through that speed. I know the, the stretch really well. And if they're driving that, then they're, they're not acting responsibly. And that's, that's horrible, and maybe they should be get a really big ticket. Um, but, you know, you, as a counselor, you've got to do what you think is right, and, and sometimes it's not the easiest decision. So that's why I'm going to vote this way. Thank you. Back to, uh, I'll take back the chair, Mr. Vice Chair. Thank you. Sure. I'll, 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 I, you know, if I may, um, look, I think, I think at the end of the day what we all want is is um, uh, obviously, no, you know, for, for people to live in a safe environment and zero accidents, right? Seriously, I, you know, I, I, I have a, a young boy here, and I see him cross the road sometimes or approach a road, and honest to God, my throat, my heart goes in my throat, you know, just boo, 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 because it's just, and, and safety is about awareness. Um, 
Yeah, you can. We can also. We can all say, look, reduce the speed limits here to horse and buggy speed, uh, and then life will be good for everybody because it, then it'll just be safe for everybody. That's not true. Because really what happens is you lull people into thinking uh, that uh, you, you've created a, uh, a safer environment. I got to tell you, if you get hit with a, by a car going 50 or you get hit by a car going 40, you ain't making it at either speed. You get hit by a car at 30 kilometers an hour, you ain't making it then either. Or 20. Just the weight differential just doesn't, doesn't, isn't going to help you out. The, the the issue is really it's it's about awareness and and regrettably I think what we're doing in a lot of areas is we're creating the impression uh, that we're th that a situation um, uh, has been made safer when in reality it's not it hasn't and uh, people are lulled into the uh, attitude that uh, that it is uh, somewhat safer. Um, I, I, I look. I, I understand um, uh, what the what the counselor is trying to do. Uh, I respect that. I I, I have uh, I have no doubt that it's safety is top of mind, and and you're trying to um, to do things that that will make it um, that that will you know create um, a safer situation for folks. But um, but if the road doesn't doesn't feel that way and if um, I, I don't I don't see how you do that I don't see how you get to a, a safer place just a, simply by uh, um, willy-nilly arbitrarily um, lowering the speed limit by, like that so um, uh, that's all I have to say on that Mr. Chair. Anyone else wishing to speak? Can I just... No I'm, I'm sorry I, me I meant that I, I can't procedurally I'm sorry. Um, any members of the community council wishing to speak? Just, I have already taken my turn. Uh, Mr. Chair, if you'll indulge me, I just want to request a recorded vote on this one. Of course, so I just Thank want to you. make sure, Councilor Crisanti, we've got him online, great. Um, Madam Clerk, I'm gonna turn the recorded vote over to you. Yes, Mr. Yep. Chair, I'm here and... Uh, Thank you. We, we, we couldn't see you for a moment, Councilor Crisanti, so we're gonna do a recorded vote and uh, we'll let the clerk take over. And sorry, the record for clarity, the recorded vote is on the amendment by Councillor Morley. If we could have a recorded vote on the amendment on the screen from Councillor Morley, all those in favor, Councillor Morley, Councillor Nunziata, and if we could just see Councillor Crisanti how he's voting. Um, I'm in Councilor favor. In favor, that's three in favor. Any opposed? Councillor Holliday. And Councillor Peruza, that motion carries. Okay, uh, thank you to everyone speaking on that. Our next item, back in the order here, uh, back to the top of the page. Uh, we have a couple of items we skipped over. That is EY 12.2, which is 1911 Finch Avenue West, Jane Finch Mall, official plan amendment and zoning amendment applications decision report for approval. Are there any uh, folks present or online wishing to speak to this item? Seeing none, <laughs> questions of staff. Seeing none to speak, Councilor Peruzza. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. I have a motion now uh, which the clerk has um, uh, and, and basically it asks to um, adjourn this meeting to June. Um, and, uh, and I'll explain uh, why the, the motion, Mr. Chair. Um, first, let me say, there's a, there's a, a level of excitement uh, in the community about the proposed changes uh, that are coming. There's a, you know, there's a, a, a much heightened sense of awareness and optimism, you know, we, and in the Jane Finch area now, we have a subway. There's some subway stations. An LRT is about to open. There's a. Uh, there's been some um, uh, some talk of other public uh, sector investments that, that that are coming into the neighborhood. Uh, we're planning a hub at the corner of York Gate and Finch, and 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 the list goes on and on. And this is one of the applications that has been much anticipated 
uh, and an application for development there at the corner of Jane and Finch, the Jane Finch Mall, which is sort of a signature property, a signature piece uh, that has been anticipated for quite some time. And quite frankly, I got to commend the applicants uh, for a lot of the work that they have done with the local community in getting their application to this, um, to this state. Uh, they've gone out, they've consulted extensively, they hired local folks, local young people. Uh, there's been a considerable amount of engagement. And what I think you have before you is an application that um, in many ways is worthy of support. Um, so why do I uh, move adjournment of this meeting to June, um, as you see there? Uh, as you know, a couple of weeks ago, we dealt with a, not a couple of weeks ago, at the last meeting, we dealt with a secondary plan for the, uh, for the neighborhood, uh, which we also um, adjourned uh, for some uh, further considerations of the heights within the broader plan. And, and obviously, we want to make sure that everything lines up and everything fits, um, fits together. Uh, and why, um, why do that? Uh, Jane Finch. Uh, I remember in the, I guess it would be now the early 70s, when the tallest, probably the tallest building anywhere in the suburbs, uh, was built at the corner of Jane Finch, 32-story tower at that time. I, I challenge any of you to go out throughout your neighborhoods and find me a 32-story tower that was built in the 1970s uh, in your neighborhood. Uh, so this 32-story tower went in there, and then it went in with lots of hope. Well, uh, hope uh, basically disintegrated into despair uh, for uh, many uh, decades uh, to follow. You have, uh, uh, you know, uh, developments that went into that neighborhood that won awards, that won design awards. Uh, uh, Yorkwood's Grand Ravine, the Driftwood, uh, you know, sort of, uh, um, array of complexes, the grass weights, which have now been uh, torn down. And, and what you will find in all of those things, all of those developments that then were, came in and won awards, uh, was that they didn't, uh, the, the social experiment uh, that ensued uh, didn't work out well for anybody who went to, uh, uh, who went to live there. Uh, for anybody who was caught up in having to uh, reside there and eventually call it their home. Um, and, uh, and as a result of that, we have generations of people that have located in the na neighborhood which absolutely wouldn't live anywhere else. They love the neighborhood. And I love the neighborhood. I grew up there as well, and I, and I continue to live there. But what we want to do, and uh, given our history, what we all really want to do is we make sure that whatever happens going forward lifts the neighborhood up, uh, works in favor of the community, not against it. So, so while the, you know, while we have a sort of a mixed bag right now, there's a there's an excitement, but there's also a considerable amount of trepidation uh, because our experiences with growth and development historically have not gone well. Uh, so what we really want to do is we want to get it right. We want to make sure that. Uh, that the future uh, for the Jane Finch area uh, is a future that everybody is, is, uh, uh, can come around and in a hopeful way uh, understand that we're, going to a, we're, we're headed to a better place. Uh, and that's really what we want to do here. We want to make sure that, that the plan here at the corner that uh, is, uh, is ultimately uh, uh, um, developed or, and supported uh, is a plan that uh, works in in favor of the of that neighborhood. So, um, so let's line it up with uh, with the secondary plan, and uh, and hopefully we're able to go hand in hand forward into a into a better future for for the entire neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? We have that amendment ready. Those in favor of Councilor Perutz's amendment? Any opposed? That carries. Okay, next item is um, EY 12.3, which is one York Gate Boulevard zoning bylaw amendment and site plan control applications. Up, oh, my apologies. Wrong page. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Clerk. 
EY 12.4, 33 to 51 Walsh Avenue and 2717 to 2745 Weston Road, Zoning Bylaw Amendment and Site Plan Control Applications re Appeal Report. Um, are there any speakers? Saying none. Questions of staff? Councillor? No question. Any questions of staff? No questions of staff. Councillor Peruzza? Uh, thank you again, Mr. Chair. I'm, I'm uh, again, uh, in this case, uh, I'm going to be moving uh, staff uh, recommendations and, uh, uh, and, and basically uh, the, the recommendation for those of you um, um, uh, who don't have the report readily in front of them uh, is basically uh, to direct our staff uh, to the Ontario Land Tribunal in opposition of the application uh, that has been uh, proposed, and uh, and uh, I, am, uh, I I support this course of action, Mr. Chair. Uh, again, this is an uh, this is an um, another very very large application at the corner of um, Wilson and uh, in Weston Road, a south um, west corner of uh, Wilson and Weston Road, uh, and. Uh, it's an application that, unlike the previous application that we just dealt with, hasn't gone through a very extensive community uh, uh, consultation or review, hasn't gone through uh, extensive community input uh, or any of those kinds of things. It's, uh, uh, it's a massive application uh, uh, just south of a very stable, low-rise uh, uh, neighborhood uh, that just seeks to drop a ton of development uh, and a ton of density on this site with a lot of, uh, without a lot of uh, clear thinking about um, how to do that well. Uh, as you can see, if you read the application before you, uh, there's, there's lots and lot, there are lots and lots of issues uh, connected to the application, height, uh, density, um, uh, how the, uh, site has been organized. Uh, uh, as you can see, it's not an application that anybody would look at and say, you know what, this is something that someone is going to build. I, I believe that it's not that kind of application at all. I believe it's an application just kind of cobbled together uh, to basically uh, establish uh, density and height uh, on a site without a, without a lot of uh, uh, clear thinking and certainly without a lot of uh, community input. The regrettable element to all of this, uh, Mr. Chair, is this, is that the rules have been changed in such a way that local communities no longer have an opportunity to really have a meaningful say in, uh, in the future uh, development growth of a particular neighborhood or, or a particular area. They're shut out of the process. The, the new structure, the new provincial um, rules around this uh, basically exclude people from being able to uh, go in and have a say, uh, go in and, and, and be able to sort of point out why they like or don't like uh, a particular application. Uh, and, and, uh, and that's very, very regrettable. So in this instance, the local community is basically has to rely on the good faith and, and the goodwill of the staff of the City of Toronto uh, and our planners and our lawyers uh, that they are actually going to go there uh, to the Ontario Land Tribunal armed with, uh, with a position and armed with the, uh, the skills and the heart to go in and say, look, these are the reasons why we don't believe uh, you should do this, and this is what we think uh, at a bare minimum you should change. And, uh, and, um, and you know, as, as local neighborhoods, we need to rely on that. We need to rely on what we have in front of us uh, today. And I know that uh, there aren't any community members here, and I don't know if any of them are following this conversation online, uh, but, but really that's what they're saying. And don't let the, the empty seats here um, uh, you know, fool you into thinking that people in that neighborhood do not care about this particular development or this particular application, because they do. At a couple of very large community meetings, people have come out and have expressed a lot of the concerns that are basically outlined in this report and much, much more. Uh, unfortunately, there's an element of powerlessness that people feel in relation to how land development uh, approval is now 
uh, dealt with in the in the in the city of Toronto and across the province of Ontario, uh, and uh, and and it's and it's very it's very regrettable because because while provincially I, I understand all of these rule changes came around uh, with the notion that you know this is all about building more housing uh, um, you know faster and and in greater numbers and and you know what we're only able to build the housing. Uh, that that the numbers of cranes that you have in the city are able to build, that the numbers of workers that you have in the city and across the province are able to build. You're not able to build it any faster or any more because we've approved 170 or 180,000 units of housing which are not being built. And they're not being built because, you know, the economy and because of, because of all of those other things. And just because you sit at Queen's Park in the Pink Palace and you say more, faster, rip up the rules, uh, exclude communities from being able to, to have their say on these things, that that somehow magically, uh, you know, uh, is going to build more housing, well, I have news for you. You know, uh, housing is usually built with concrete, steel, wood, and lumber, and labor. And... And you can only go as fast as you can bring those elements together. Not much faster than that. So uh, please uh, support this and, uh, and let's send our staff to the Ontario Land Tribunal and, uh, and hopefully we send them there in, in fighting mode and fighting spirit and, uh, and defend the interests of the neighborhood and the community. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Peruzza. Councillor Peruzza moves the staff recommendations. All those I, I, I did at the beginning, yes. Yeah. Any opposed? Yeah. That item carries. Thank you. Um, EY 12.16, which is Longbourn Drive, introduction of overnight on-street parking. Any speakers? Seeing none. Any questions of staff? Um, Councillor Crisanti? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you uh, so much. So this has come, uh, come back again. There's an amendment to this... Uh, uh, to the previous uh, recommendation, uh, and um, if I can ask staff to, uh, I believe Nancy, you have uh, an amendment to this. You could put it on the screen. Um, so this is just to allow um, overnight to uh, resolve an issue in the community for some overnight parking, uh, just from 12:01 a.m. to 7 a.m., and that's it. So, um, and I'll also prohibit parking on the opposite side, which is a, a transit route. It's right at the hydro corridor. Uh, so I would ask my, uh, my colleagues to kindly support this so we can move on with that. Thanks very much. Can, can I ask for a recorded vote on the item as amended? If we do have that, if we don't, sure. just a record, recorded vote on the amendment would be great. Thanks, Councillor Quisanti. So just once the staff are ready, we're ready to go. Okay, on, so on Councillor Quisanti's amendment, I'm just going to ask the clerk to take a recorded vote. All those in favor of the amendment on the screen, Councillor Morley, Councillor Nunziata, and in favor for me, of Councillor Cursanti. Yeah. It's on street parking. Councillor Peruzza, any opposed? Yep. Councillor Holliday, that item carries. Thank you. Okay, um, I think we have one more left. Uh, EY 12.26, which is reopening of 2023, EY 9.32, parking regulation amendments will be crescent. Uh, Councillor Nunziata. Yeah, I'll just move the recommendation. Councillor Nunziata moves the recommendation. All those in favor? Any opposed? That item carries. And don't go away. We've got some bills. Bylaws, excuse me. Oh, even with the glasses. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. Uh, any volunteers to move this? Deputy Mayor Morley is going to move. Most Thank one. you, Mr. Chair. Uh, moving that bills 313 to 319, 323, and 332. Prepared for the April 8, 2024 meeting 12 of the Etobicoke York Community Council. Be declared as bylaws and passed subject to section 226.9 of the City of Toronto Act 2006. All those in favor? Any opposed? That item carries. Motion number two. Any volunteers? Deputy Mayor Morley. Uh, moving that confirmatory bills to confirm the legislative proceedings of the Etobicoke York Community Council acting under delegated authority. 
Mm -hmm. At meeting 12 on April 8th, 2024, be declared as bylaws and passed subject to section 226.9 of the City of Toronto Act 2006. All those in favor, any opposed, that item carries. That's it. Motion for Councillor Peruzza to adjourn. So happy to do, do that. Yeah. All those in favor, and we're adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, oh, oh before we go, one, 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 one special uh, thank you to Mary Newton. I apologize for not doing this at the top of the meeting, but uh, it's Mary's last meeting for us uh, together. Uh, she is heading off to the Scarborough Community Council, lucky them. Uh, but, but Mary's been a friend to this community council and has helped us through a number of very difficult issues. Personally, thank you for your service um, in helping me, but on behalf of the community council, thank you for looking after us and we really appreciate your support and wish you all the best over in Scarborough. Now we can adjourn. <laughs>